time. Everybody's always asking us, man, we get phone call after phone call after phone call. And when we're at shows or we're off hunting or whatever, you know, people come up to us and say, hey, hey, what kind of dogs y'all like? What kind of dogs y'all prefer? Well, we like them all. If they run a hog, we like them, you know. Typically, we don't run open mouth dogs. Uh, everybody has their reason, we have ours. Uh, we run mainly all cur dogs. Uh, predominantly black mouth curs is what we like. Uh, there's a lot of them out there, you make your decision. But right here, right here is a dog, his name's Hillbilly. He is a uh, three quarter black mouth and a quarter walker. Uh, he is from Texas. Uh, we purchased him a few, about a year or two ago and he is a great little dog. A little bit on the short range, really a little bit hot nose, but when he gets on a hog, buddy, it's on. He stays on him, stays on him until he gets it done. Got a lot of scars to prove he's got it done several times. This is Bigfoot and uh, he came from Texas as well. And he is a, uh, uh, let's see, I think he is a uh, black mouth, pit, and hound cross. Uh, we have actually hunted with this dog before, and he is a he is one heck of a dog. We were very fortunate to get this dog. Uh, we're we're all excited about it to add it to our pack. This is Delta. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. This is actually uh, a puppy off of my two main our two main catch dogs. My two Americans. She is an American, full-blooded American bulldog. She's roughly 13 months old, and she is an unbelievable, great dog. I love the Americans. Their their temperament is very good. They're friendly most of the time around all other dogs. Easy to handle. Uh, just real big fan of the Americans. This is Mo. This dog we uh, we purchased from uh, a guy in Georgia. Uh, I, I'm not sure his breed. I know he is a cur. Uh, a cur hound cross, I think he is, and he is also silent, and he is uh, he's what we call a uh, definition of a, a long range dog. He uh, he hunts out five, six, seven hundred yards, and when he gets on a gets on a hog, he's gone. Uh, this dog here is Scoop. He is a black mouth cur. Uh, he is a dog that we've raised. Uh, Tr's brother actually owns the mother and the father. The dad's a bear dog and uh, we've raised him from a pup. He is really gritty, as you can tell. He's got scars all over him. But uh, once, he's, once, he gets on a, once he gets on a hog, he sticks unbelievably. Mason is a cur bird dog cross. Uh, he is strictly a run and catch dog. Uh, he, he, he will take a hot, hot track or run a hog. You know, when he gets on it, he runs it very well. But when he gets there, uh, there ain't no, there is no, no barking goes on when he gets there. You gotta stay really tight to this dog. We only use him in certain situations. We try not to run him with our bay dogs uh, on long distances, but if, if we know we can get there quick, hey, we'll turn him loose and stop him, you know, thick grass or something like that. And uh, he, he definitely gets it done, but he is a running catch dog. This dog is a Catahoula. We don't, we don't have many Catahoulas, but this one right here is a very good one. This is a little bit. Uh, we purchased her from a guy, in, I think, in North Florida. Young guy getting out of it, and uh, turned out to be a really good dog. She's got a pretty good nose on her, and and, and pretty pretty impressed about her so far. Jim, come here, boy. Jim is a cur hound cross. His daddy is actually a uh, a cur, and the mama is a black and tan. He is a fairly long range dog, uh, silent uh, on the track. And when he hooks up, he is gone. He takes a track, very old, two, three hour old track. Uh, you know, very good, very good nose on the dog. This is uh, Preacher. He is a Florida black mouth cur. He's a young pup. He is doing exceptionally well. Uh, he's coming along pretty good. He's about nine, 10 months old and he has bayed a bunch of hogs already. So this is my main man. This is our male catch dog. This is Tank. You've seen him on TV a bunch. He's got scars all over him. He is a big, big, big boy. And very, very, very powerful. And uh, I would trust him around anything. He's like a big baby. There again, he's American. I really love the Americans. This is Diva. She's an American Bulldog too. And uh, she's a female. This is the mother and the father of the other dog. Awesome dog, great temperament. Unbelievably athletic and uh, great at the catch. 
This is Daisy. She is a full blooded Crockett plot out of some bear stock. Uh, very hard to find one of these dogs. She is a silent plot. Um, she is only 13 months old and she is doing exceptionally well. Uh, very friendly dog, great, good nose, a little, little bit colder than a typical hound, but so far we are very pleased with her. This dog here, you probably, if you've talked to me much, you've heard this dog mentioned. This is, this is, uh, this is one of our, one of our better dogs, I guess you would say, as far as finding hogs. One heck of a locator. Uh, we call her Feist Dog. She is not a Feist. That's just what the guy named her that I got her from years ago. Uh, she is actually a, uh, a yard dog, rambling mutt. They don't know what the daddy is, but the mama is a, uh, uh, a blue, uh, blue healer. So that's what's typically used for cows. These two dogs are out of Texas. They are uh, got them from Mr. Jimmy Hill out of Beaumont. They are what we call, I guess you would call a Texas strand of black mouse, but they're his bloodline. He's raised for 40 years, but they are, they are full-blooded black mouse. Uh, Sully and Ollie, this is uh, Sully. They're full brothers, and this is, this is Ollie. They're uh, a little over a year old. They're doing pretty good. Uh, got a lot, of, a lot of working on them to do, but they're coming along pretty good. I don't have enough time to tell you how good this little girl is getting. She's been wrecked down, wrecked a couple times with a nasty boar hog, but uh, she's a Florida cur too. That's that's her brother down there, but she is doing exceptionally well. Be glad to get her back in the woods. She's been in heat. And this is a little puppy. This is JJ. I got this dog from Mr. J. Metzler here in Alabama. Uh, kind of some of his own bloodline stuff that he's got going on. Very, very excited about this little fella. I've hunted with all of his you know, his kin and his parents and all them, and man, they are, uh, they're some of the best black mouse I've ever been around. So that's a little, that'll sum it up right now. That, that's our kennel. Uh, as you can see, we got plenty more room for some more. So we'll uh, we'll load these things down and, and hopefully get, keep producing some good dogs. But if you follow me, we'll go in and uh, I'll show you our, our uh, room, our collar room, and uh, we'll change these collars out for you. We got some new collars in, and uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to change out to these. Uh, what we can, some people call them extended range antennas, and some people call them tough skins. It's just, it just depends, but I tell you, it really makes a big difference in our eyes. It's, it seems to. Not only to hold up better uh, under uh, fighting a hog or or uh, in the dog box getting cramped and, and whatever you know I've seen it happen a lot but um, they seem to hold up a lot better you know under under our certain circumstances you, you, you normally don't have to do this with, with all dogs but we you know personally in our applications when we use our collars and what they go through they got to be as durable as possible so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna change some of these out I got two, two on me today. We got several new collars. So I tell you, show you something else too um, that we do. You can see we got name plates on all of our garments, and we keep them numbered: uh, dog one, dog two. And on our Garmin unit, actually, what we do is we have we have our dogs' names on there with this number, and that just helps, you know. Keeping it on that dog lets you know all the time. We, we run so many dogs out in the box, and you know, you know, you know what dog you're tracking instead of going out. What collar's on this dog? What collar's on that dog? Like telometry, you know, they got a number that you write down, and we run both collars on our dog. We run telometry, uh, beat beat, they call it long range in case something happens. This is kind of an insurance policy. This is primarily what we use. Like I said, small, a small screwdriver with a very, very good uh, fine tip on it. But you got two screws located here on the back side, on the bottom of the collar. What you want to do is just go in, make sure there's no dirt in there. You'll strip these things out pretty easy. They're small screws. Remove both of these screws. And then this, this back plate, it'll only go on one way. Uh, so you really can't put it on. If you, if you see this thing not flush like that, 
when you crack, when you tighten it down, and you'll know, you know, it, it ain't all right. This is supposed to go back on flush. So we remove that back plate. And this ex exposes the collar. Uh, just slide that out of your little zip tie there, and you'll have a little cover on your uh, over your other screw. Blow that out. Make sure there ain't no sand or dirt in that. You got one little small Phillips head right here. A uh, little small screw. Like I said, you're gonna need a small screwdriver because these are kind of small. Firm press down and just ease it off. Always have a good clean area where you can keep up your screws or whatever, you know. Make sure there ain't no dirt in it. And this is your factory antenna. Like I said, they work fine. They're just not quite as durable as we need them to need them to be. So we're gonna change them out. Make sure there's no sand or dirt in there. I'll tell you a lot of things, another thing too. You'll look right here, you'll see this metal ring right here. Well, this is what makes your connection with this antenna. If this is dirty and corroded, you don't have this a good connection down on this on this metal flashing right here, you're probably not, not gonna have a good connection. So always make, make sure this is clean and clear of obstruction and there's no dirt. If there is, just take your pocket knife or a you know, it's a flathead screwdriver or something, and just make sure you got a good contact. But I like cleaning the battery terminal, terminal when you're caught. Lay that down in there, drop your screw back. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Take it easy. If it's going in fairly easy, then you're good. Put your protective plug back on. Lay your collar back over it. Holes match up fine. Get your other screws. Well, I like to get I like to get both of them started first before I snug one down. That way you know your plate's not in a bind. Got them both started, and just simply give these about the same snug. Good snug. Make sure it's flush. I got it all right. Slide this back through your zip tie here and you got it extended range antenna tough last all the time and always remember to save these you know when you send these things something goes on something goes wrong you got to send them back to the factory just simply change it back out send this back to the factory these are these normally run around 10 12 dollars a piece so you don't want you don't want to pay for them both and then because they're they're not going to send this back to you they're going to send you another collar so take this off here, have to send one back. And we got a couple more to do, so gotta hunt. We're gonna hunt tonight, so I'm gonna put these back on charge. Throw them there and repeat the process. And like I said, we got several new ones, so as my antennas come in, I'm gonna change all of them out. And you'll see a big difference in your range, I think. A lot of people might not, but I, I think we do see a big, big uh, advantage on as far as being durable and i tell you another thing coming to your Garmin Garmin comes with a factory antenna as well but I also keep an extended range antenna on, on here uh, and, and it, you know it, it helps it helps a lot it's durable really flexible uh, you can buy these the same place you buy those call those antennas there most of the time so now I'm just going to change this out this other antenna since I only got two and we'll be ready for the hunt tonight. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for all the best hunting shows on YouTube.